a lot of extreme stuff. This is the sort of stuff that we've been seeing, um, you know, that we've been seeing lately. Let me just show you this this right here. Look at this. Look at this post I found that was posted on Wall Street Bets. This is for you, Dad. All right, just ride with me for just a second. I remember when the housing collapse sent a torpedo through my family. My father's concrete company collapsed almost overnight. My father lost his home. My uncle lost his home. I remember my brother helping my father count pocket change on our kitchen table. That was all the money he had left in the world. While this was happening in my home, I saw hedge funders literally drinking champagne as they looked down on the Occupy Wall Street protesters. And I will never forget that. Thank you, actual username. I am very proud of that video that I did. And people, I've gotten unbelievably good feedback on it. So that makes me very happy. My father never recovered from that blow. He fell deeper and deeper into al alcoholism and exists now as a shell of his former self, waiting for death. This is all the money I have, and I'd rather lose it all than give them what they need to destroy me. Taking money from me won't hurt me because I don't value it at all. I'll burn this down. I'll burn it all down just to spite them. This is for you, Dad. Now that's got a lot of of up up boats. That's got a lot of up boats and a lot of comments. Now, is it possible that this is everybody clapped? Is it possible that it's complete propaganda? Yes, it is. It is absolutely possible that this user just made that up and that that specific event didn't happen. However, this story is resonating with a lot of people whether or not the actual post itself is factually accurate. And I think that can give us a bit of a eye into the general mindset of what is going on on Wall Street Bets and what is going on in the millennial psyche at the moment. You see... Yeah, oh, absolutely. People try to act like 2008 hasn't broken everyone in this country. I remember it. I remember, listen, I was working a job, like a job, like a sales job that required me to sell things to people in the height of the, of the last market crash. And I remember watching my own numbers just go boop my, because you can't sell to people who don't have money. And all of a sudden, our volume is going down. There's people complaining about the economy all the time. There's all kinds, like literally, it's a, it was absurd. And the only people who really wrote out of that okay were, you know, the people who completely lucked out and the wealthiest people in the world. Nobody else got out of that okay. Everyone else felt the pain. Everyone else felt the squeeze. It, it's weird, isn't it? You know? It, 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 it's wild to me. You know that this was 13 years ago? The 2008 market crash happened? 13 years. And a lot of us have been laboring for 13 years or more under a system that has been completely destroyed. A statement on Wall what was I going to say? Yeah, so this sentiment of... of just absolute rage at Wall Street has been boiling and bubbling under the surface of America for a long time. And this GameStop situation, as it turns out, is turning out to be a bit of a catalyst for it, or at least an outlet. Now, I don't know what, that's, what, what that will mean. I don't know what we're going to find out today. Like, today is the day that tons of stuff is unfolding. We might even get news during this stream so there may be breaking news that comes that i will divert from whatever we're talking about to go check on it because it's that big it's huge and it's incredibly hard to tell exactly what is going on I, because there's just so much happening it's become such a zeitgeist that you have last night 350,000 people actually you know what let's get the let's get the confirmation let's do it live here we go let's do this right now we will get the exact amount of people that peaked during AOC's stream last night AOC here we go let's find out last night the peak was Holy shit. Oh, yeah, because... Wait a second. That's not correct, is it? Hmm. Here we go. Peak. 
the peak was 308,000. The peak was 308,000 for the second longer half of the stream. 230,000 average viewers. Two, what the fuck? Do you know how absurd that is? That's insanely good, Angel Bunny. That's like what the, that's like, that's like more viewers than like the celebrity fucking gaming streamers get. That's huge. Absolutely massive. Unbelievable. Oh yeah, well, you shoot me a, uh, shoot me a little DM on that goddess trans girl. It's a pretty big deal. And it was all talking about this GameStop situation. And do you want to know who came on, by the way? It was Occupy Wall Street. Well, okay, true. Well, we'll talk about that another day, okay? Um, it was Occupy Wall Street activists who were there at Occupy Wall Street back in the day. This conflict has been raging for this entire goddamn time and it's not going away and this also interestingly caused a further rush of confidence towards GameStop and towards uh the AMC and Dogecoin and all of these other memes that are being promoted up right now so it's a really weird place to be right now we're in a very strange place by the way if you have dogecoin if you even memed and got dogecoin a few years ago you might want to go check your dogecoin because you may have made a lot of money or you may be entitled to a lot of money i would be very careful buying into meme things but if you happen to have a doge wallet you might want to check on that because you might be uh you might be having some money right now. You might have some money in your goddamn account. That's pretty wild. Yeah, yeah, Yoda coin. We need a Yoda coin. That's what we need. But it might be worth uh, checking that. Let's just real quick. Let's just real quick take a look. Hold on. Let's go to Wall Street Bets, yeah? Let's go see what they're talking about on Wall Street Bets right now. Because I want to I wanna talk about this and then I want to get into the coverage of it because there's some stuff that i like there's a bunch of actual stuff that i want to watch together and comment on but first i want to do some of the fun of going in and seeing what the fuck is being talked about here we go gme this is let's see this is sorted by the hot new posts okay here we go gme yolo month end update january 21 by deep fucking value this was posted one hour ago Nope, sorry, two hours ago. As of two hours ago, he is up $46 million. $46 million. This random, in highly invested uh, viewer or uh, user of, of Wall Street Bets is up. Now, this guy's got some money, but he directed a lot of people to also make a lot of money. This is what we might call an activist investor who's also made himself very, very rich in the process. Which, you know what? All right. How to buy GME above broker limits. Robinhood and other shitty brokerages are allowing us to buy two, five, or very low numbers. However, they're not allowing option contracts. Here's a trick that will work. Uh, I don't know about this. Honor to the diamond hands. This is deep fucking value, by the way, if, if I remember correctly. This is a roaring, roaring cat on YouTube, a.k.a. Um, deep fucking value. That's the dude right there. Hey, SEC, here's your market manipulation. RH, Robin Hood, working to keep GME down. Now... <laughs> Diamond hands. I am going to sell GME. I am going to hold GME. <laughs> yeah, D deep fucking value has been a bit invested in GameStop. But guess what? There's a lot of other people talking about and tweeting about GameStop. In addition to the stream I just showed you of AOC, one of the most popular politicians in America, doing an entire, like, 
two and a half hour stream specifically coming down in favor of the retail buyers, aka the people who are buying GameStop right now. That is ins that is just what the fuck is going on. So the zeitgeist has actually continued and grown more intense from where it was the other day, even with the market manipulation going on. And that's when we need, yeah, we got, let's see, we've got basically every social media person you can imagine has been coming out in favor of the, um, of the Wall Street betters. The, uh, we've gotten celebrities, we've gotten musicians, we've gotten, polit it, it's actually unbelievable. All of these people coming out in favor of this. And it's actually working because it's creating a, uh, what's the word? It's like a wog. You know, you know the orcs from uh, from 40k. I know this joke has been made already. This is not a new joke, but it is. It actually is like a wog. It's a bunch of people psyching each other up so much, and then just going, "Yeah, we're gonna do it!" Ah! And they all are charging at the same time, and no one can handle that. As it turns out, not even massive, um, massive hedge I think funds. Elizabeth Warren kind of chickened out of being progressive on Twitter. Yeah, I think there was. The in SEC fact, I don't even think I got to read this yet because I believe the SEC actually came back and made a comment about this. Let's find out. Let's find out if they did. You got that the meme of that? Yeah, we've seen it on here. I think it was posted in there. I know. I know. I'm not the first one making it. It wasn't really meant to be just for funny. It's to explain the idea. Well, but that's how, but that's how social forces work, goddess trans girl. Like, right? Money's value exists because we give it value. It only has social value. You know, um, like there are, I mean, food also has social value, but food has material value as well. If you have a sandwich and there's somebody who's hungry, that person can eat the sandwich. You can't eat money. You can't build things with money money represents something else and we all decide what it is worth like on a huge unfathomably large level is this the here we go this is probably the one right yeah this is probably the one let's take a look now of course the average person can't just decide money is worthless because that's not how it works it's only collectively by which we determine it Let's take a look. Let's read this. Let's read this comic. Oh, this is a, oh, this is an effort. This is an effort comic. Let's try. Technical analysts united. Gork Mork Enterprises has no tangible value. There's no reason for these idiots to keep bidding it up. It is not rational. The inquisitors are pulling files now. These greenskins obviously don't know something we don't. Here they're sleeping. HR says they can liquidate the Imperial Guard pension fund to buy some more time. Big E and Sons Investments. The Necron bond brokers. Did you see what's going on in equities? Nope. Number one dead. Meanwhile, over at Wog Street Bets. Bye, bye, bye. Warboss says if the bonfire ain't built before the Burna Boys shows, we don't get no company grill night. True. True, though. American yeah. currency is not bad. Basically, 100% accurate. Fiat There's a bunch currency. of these like if uh, original firms the US that are just like the dollar, the value globally freaking out because somebody's do if they because somebody managed to do what they do all the time better this time than they did. Orcs memeing the value of GME into existence. But that's the thing. Here's the thing, though. The fact of the matter is that okay, like it's really complicated to explain this, but GameStop does have value. Day GameStop is a retail firm. They have things that are worth money. They have games, they have consoles, they have employees, they have uh, buildings that they own. However, how much money that is worth and how much that is projected to be worth uh, is, uh, you know, is, is, um, is a matter of speculation. If the ninth gen console went discless, that would make GameStop file for bankruptcy. I don't think so, actually. I think um, I think that GameStop is actually like um, like has some plans. Like I think they're planning to go into like the gaming lounge business, where uh, after COVID, of course. But I, th 
I don't remember. I was reading a whole bunch about this. I believe they're planning on pivoting from like physical game copies into like um, games merchandise, like collectibles, and then also having like rental areas where you can play with your friends on systems that you wouldn't be able to have at home. I, I don't know. That's a that's something that I've read about a couple of articles about, but I don't know. I don't think anything is final. Get the fact that GameStop is now worth more than Walmart as a company should expose what utter nonsense the stocks are. Well, yeah, but they're nonsense. This is the thing that people need to understand. Stocks are nonsense in a very particular way. They're not just nonsense. They're nonsense in a very special way. And you have to understand how they're nonsense to be able to understand them. Like stocks are... Everything is on the stock market is all about speculation. It's all about what's going to happen in the future. And very little is about what actually is happening right now. Except for, uh, I should say, except for what other people are doing on the stock market right now. That's what matters right now. Everything else is speculation. Everything else is the future. Yeah, if psychics were real, we wouldn't need stocks. Yes, it's all speculation. That's how stocks work. You are buying in with the hopes that something good will happen. It's, yes. Now, when people say that it's the, the a casino for the rich, that is accurate. But saying it is the same as a casino is not accurate, okay? Like, I, I know that, like, I've seen this some of these takes going around. Like, you actually, it, there is a system, just like you might not be smart to gamble on blackjack um you might not be really i mean unless you're really good at blackjack but the fact that you can be good at blackjack shows that there is some system there and that system should be understood and respected um yeah so yeah but anyway it's really really complicated okay so uh the, the, the moral of the story here is that, yes, things are very, very, very complicated right now, and it got even more complicated over the last two days. So when we last talked about this, we were at the position where we had discovered that Melvin Capital had been bailed out by Citadel a market maker. Some of you will remember this from the stream the other day. Some of this will probably be terms that you've forgotten already. That's okay, because what we're gonna be talking about today is something much easier to understand, okay? Much, much easier to understand. That's what we're about to talk to about site. now. GG. I'm gonna explain Other to you something really cool after I read this comment. Or another another and are able Hold on, to let's be see. Invested in right now. Let me the read this comment real quick. Thank you very much, Adam Flores, responding to site chat. Other currencies are worth in some value or another and are able to be invested in right now. The petrodollar is a means of exchange in regards to our presence in the presence in the Middle East. Yes, that is uh, accurate. Yes, to the, I mean that's very simplified, but yes. Um, yeah, the echo is gone because I turned off the mon. I don't know why it echoes. It's supposed to play through my ear, but then it gets picked up. I can't. Yeah, I can't. It's. I know what I need to do to fix it. It's just really complicated. What I need to do to fix it is I need to set this, I need to set the whole thing to, um, I need to redo my audio setup, which I will do, I promise. It's just, I can't do it right now because I'm way overstressed. And I have way too much that I'm doing, but I'll do it this weekend, okay? Or next week, one of the two. So, um, what was I saying? Yeah, for now, I'm gonna leave the echo on, okay? I'm sorry, I'm gonna leave the echo on. Uh, here we go. There we go. Okay. Uh, so here's what we're going to talk about. So Robin Hood, do we all remember Robin Hood? Do we remember what Robin Hood is? Robin Hood is a stock purchasing app that has zero commission costs. What that means is that if you have cash, you can buy stocks and you won't lose anything on it. Um, you won't lose any, like, I mean, you might lose on the stock, but you don't have to pay them anything to invest, which is new. Um, yeah, it, it, it's new. Um, so, uh, you know, Robin Hood, I think this started, if I'm not mistaken, in 2018 is when they started doing commission-free trades, and that changed how everybody does it, and now most, uh, not all, but most financial institutions offer market trades for free 
you don't have to pay a fee on the actual trade itself which is not how it used to be it used to be in order to trade stocks you need to have needed to have extra cash that would be scooped right up by the broker now they still do this for other things there's all kinds of purchases that still do this but not for standard stock purchases robin hood makes its money now you might you know your 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 thought process might be like oh well well then how does robin hood make its money right robin hood makes its money by a really stupid and complicated process in which they basically sell their orders that they're processing to a market maker who then it's completely stupid i cannot possibly dumb it down for you it's really really dumb but it, it also is really really complicated and it's also kind of smart in a dumb way basically they, they they sell the business to a market maker and the market maker does the actual business and then they pay money to robin hood so robin hood has money with which to offer the trades and people keep doing it and the cycle continues and profit is made yeah yes if a product is free you are the product that is just a fact yeah that is just a fact um and that's true by the way about my stream just so you know just so you all are completely clear my stream is free i rely on you in order to fund the stream that's the only way i make money which means i gotta ask you all for donations which means although i hate this terminology you kind of are the product of this stream and that's true for basically everything yeah see you remember and, and by the way i'm not the only one pbs did this remember this show is made possible by viewers like you do you remember that from your childhood i know that's gone but that is the same thing it's the same model yeah um and that doesn't mean i don't care about you that doesn't mean i'm not gonna keep in all my promises it just means that i am beholden to you now in the case of robin hood it's a little different because there's not a direct exchange so the customers are the product but not in the same way that we are here you know what i mean not in the exact same way your what is uh important what is the product is the fact that there are people who want to buy this thing which can then be put into a document which can then be sold and you see how this goes and then it gets lost in paperwork world okay that's all you need to understand so uh the co the company we mentioned before the market maker known as citadel does about 40 percent of robin hood's business so when robin hood is when robin hood is doing transactions a ton of those ultimately end up being handled by citadel citadel the same people who bailed out and have ownership in Melvin Capital, the hedge fund, the hedge fund which is going over, going under because of GameStop. And yesterday, Robin Hood stopped letting people trade on GameStop. And that's really fucking weird. That's really fucking weird. And if you if you're coming out of that and going, that seems really unfair. It seems really unfair that Robin Hood would stop people from making money rightfully and fairly on the stock market. And you would be 100% correct. Because guess what? It is actually really fucked. And guess what? The Robin Hood CEO well, there's also BlackBerry. I don't want to get into BlackBerry right now. Maybe we'll do that on Monday because it's really complicated for me to jump into other stuff. And I want to make sure of it. Yeah, they stopped They stopped trading on AMC, BlackBerry, Nokia, all of the meme stocks they stopped trading on. Yeah, it's not just GME, but, it, but GME is the main one. It's all of the ones that are being targeted by the memes. All of the ones who have been shorted on by hedge funds really really weird so when they say oh we need to stop this they're stopping everyday investors from winning quite literally they're saying you don't get to win you made the right decisions you did your due diligence you made smart investments 
under the rules of capitalism, but you don't get to have the money. You don't get to win because those guys are going to lose. And those guys give us money. Yes, we're going to be watching that together in just a second, Sathers. Pretty fucked, huh? That's pretty fucked, isn't it? Doesn't that feel like obvious, blatant market manipulation? Isn't that what it really seems like? Because guess what? We're not the only ones saying that. In fact, basically everyone is saying that. But what the fuck do you do when the people who have all the money are saying, no, we won't let you win. Even though you won by the rules of this system as they currently stand, you didn't cheat, you didn't, you didn't do anything wrong, you just don't get to win because it would mean we lose this time. Even though when, when everybody else lost last time, you had to just suck it up, lose your house, live in poverty, work three jobs, destroy your family relationship because you, you and, your, and your partner are working all the time and you never get to see your kids. Pressure your kids into getting jobs earlier than they should. Liquidate your retirement. Liquidate your, uh, your savings. Cough it all up to pay your rent. So let me show you something that's really fucking cathartic. Are you ready to see something that's fucking cathartic as shit? Because I have a treat for you all. Boy, oh boy, do I have a treat for all of you. Watch this. Oh, and before we go any further, before we have a lot of fun, okay? Hey, thank you so much. Also forgot one thing about the olden stock market. If your stock went under the broker went after you, you owed the money on loss of value off stock. And that's where you get the broken thumbs. That's where you get the bashed heads. That's where you get the pew pew in the back. By the way, yeah, when there's this much money on the line, people start to get hurt. And that's not fun. And that's not cool. And it's kind of interesting what's going on right now. Because, you see, for uh, about 100 years, we've convinced ourselves that this shit wouldn't happen again. We would, we've would we convinced ourselves that, oh, we've regulated enough. The free market will take care of it, and, and it won't turn into a horrible mess. But it is. But it is. Anyway, if you're here and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and ring the bell and like the video. The video is, if you like the stream, it boosts up into algorithm and it's amazing. So I'd love it if you did that. Thank you. Let's enjoy some motherfucking content because this shit is great. Are you ready? I know, let's put our little lib hats on for just a second. You can only sell, yes, yes, that's the thing. You can sell them, but you cannot buy anymore. Totally fucked. Yeah. Okay. Now, put the lib mask on and we're going to enjoy a, a CNN segment. Because guess what? Believe it or not, this is actually a good-ass segment. Now, I will note that CNBC also did this. In fact, they did it first. CNBC interviewed this guy right here, Vlad, the CEO of... of, uh, of uh, uh, Robin Hood, they inter they uh, interviewed him earlier, and they gave him the soft, the most softball, two minute interview you could possibly imagine. Absolutely bullshit, absolute bullshit. So it was nice to see CNN come in and and not softball the guy. And it makes me question. I mean, again, it just shows that. The mainstream media is in shambles right now. Yeah, of course, MSNBC is, is, is a financial news. Of course they are. But nonetheless, it just goes to show you how the, the mainstream news just absolutely sucks at actually delivering the stories you need to hear. Anyway, let's watch this. Ready? Let's watch. Let's watch. I want you to address the office. Wait a second. That's quiet. That's too quiet. Here we go. Obvious. This looks like yeah. a move by an outfit called Robin Hood, which is supposed to be taken from the rich and given to the poor, and doing exactly the opposite. 
that when the big guys, including one of your main investors in your company, started to lose, you shut down the game to starve the little guy. Fair criticism. That's not what it is at all. And I know you started this segment. Um, it really resonated with me because you you described the story of Robinhood. Robinhood started five years ago by pioneering commission-free, yeah, no-account minimum mobile investing. And we've been the spokesperson of the individual investor. And our whole goal as an institution is to enable those customers, empower them, and give them access to the markets. Because for the longest time, markets have been only accessible to the wealthy. And so and guess what? Now they're accessible to the wealthy, but they're accessible to uh, everyone who can have a Robinhood account, but they're not allowed to win. So is that really an improvement? Is that really an improvement? Huh. You can lose, but you can't win. And when you win, you'll be stopped and you won't get to get your money. Hmm. Odd. So the entire industry adopted our business model in 2019. And in 2020, um, we added millions of new customers. The entire industry added millions of new customers who took advantage of the market rally and became investors for the very first time. So, you know, we had to make a very difficult decision. To <laughs> I'm sorry, but this face right here is actually incredible. <laughs> he looks like he's about ready to fucking punch this guy in the face. I love it. To protect uh, our customers and our firm. Why? Uh, but we in no way. Uh, Why? Now, here's a funny note. I know I'm doing the pause Angie here, but but here's the thing. Really funny. Earlier in the CNBC interview, this guy said firm and customers. And now he's saying customers and firm. It's actually hilarious. In the first interview this guy did live, he he said he literally put the firm before the customers, which is the worst thing you can possibly do if your goal is to try and bring uh and and, and bring cu customer faith back into your in, in, uh, into your institution. Literally the worst thing you could possibly do. The content going. We got I want you to address the obvious. This looks like yeah. a move by an outfit called Robin Hood, which is supposed to be taken from the rich and given to the poor, and doing exactly the opposite. That when the big guys, including one of your main investors in your company, started to lose, you shut down the game to starve the little guy. Fair criticism. That's not what it is at all. And I know you started this segment. Um, it really resonated with me because yes, you, you described the story of Robin Hood. Robin Hood started five years ago by pioneering commission-free, no-account minimum got it, mobile Zeke. investing. And we've been the spokesperson of the individual investor. And our whole goal as an institution is to enable those customers, empower them, and give them access. This is a PR sales pitch. He's not answering anything. There's no answers here. And he knows. Chris Cuomo knows. And it's funny because the people earlier on CNBC also knew. And you could see it on their faces. But they only had five minutes to talk with him hmm weird access to the markets because for the longest time markets have been only accessible to the wealthy and so the entire industry adopted our business model in 2019 and in 2020 um we added millions of new customers the entire industry added who millions cares? of new customers he's who just buffing up his own company right now rally and became investors for the very first time so okay you know we had a sure, very difficult decision to protect uh our customers and our firm why uh, but we in no way uh, why explain why you had to do it if it wasn't to protect the guys who had shorted uh the stocks which are the big hedge funds how so Good point, Chris. But also, I want to point out, I pointed this out to my chat already. Chat, please forgive me. But in the CNBC interview, which was before this one, this guy over here, Vladdy Boy, fucked up. And he said, we did this to protect the firm and the customers. Literally put the firm first in the sentence. And he corrected it for this interview. Hmm. Uh-oh. Yeah, Chris ripping me wasn't in the script. What do I do? And you'll see. You'll see. Yeah, also, you can see his eyes reading the script, but that's because they're a little scared right now. There's a lot on the line. They could lose everything right now. I don't have.
have a demonmama.gg actually. I don't have that redirect. I probably should buy that redirect at some point, but whatever. That's good. Are you helping the little guy investors? Well, I know that there's rumors around that, um, you know, we were directed by market makers or other market participants to do this. And I want to be 100% clear. There's evidence clear. of that. This decision was not made on the direction of any market maker hmm. or uh, other market participants. There's so why'd you do it? Decision. Good Robin question. Robinhood, uh, as a brokerage, has lots of financial requirements, SEC requirements. We have to put up money at clearing houses. The amount of money that we have to put up depends on market volatility. And we're in historic... Uh, we're in a historic situation where there's a lot of activity and a lot of buying concentrated in a relatively small number of symbols that are going viral on social media. So we haven't really seen anything like this before. And to to prudently manage yes, you uh, have. the the risk and the deposit requirements, uh, we had to restrict buying in these 13 stocks. But customers that held them could sell throughout uh, yes, thousands Renan of other Renando. securities and stocks on our platform were available to freely trade. And our number one priority, as you mentioned, is to make sure our platform is reliable, stable for our customers. We're serving our customers and giving them the tools. But that's exactly and what's a question now. we're doing everything in our power to turn it back on as soon as prudent. We're doing everything in our power except for turning it back on, which is literally within your power. It is literally within your power to turn it back on and you aren't because that would cost your biggest investor money and they don't have to order you to do it. Notice he says, oh, nobody told us to do it. They don't have to tell you directly to do it to go, you better not fuck this up because you'll lose all our business. Hmm. Hmm. Weird how that works, huh? But that's the thing is that the trust is in question because it seems like the only people who were getting hurt were the big shots. And that if they were benefiting from this, your small investors now believe that you wouldn't have shut down the game. And just one thing without getting in the weeds. And they've done that uh, many here. times, by the way. You don't control the listing venue for GameStop. Now, I used to work in finance, so I know this stuff. But the audience doesn't need to. The New York Stock Exchange does. So if anybody was going to control the listing and shut it down, hmm. it should have been them. But it wasn't. It was you. Uh, and the reason that they do it is very limited. They do it because they think there's evidence of fraud or they think that there needs to be a material disclosure by the company that hasn't been made. And that's done to protect the investor. You check none of those boxes here. So what he's explaining here is the times in which the stock exchange itself, you know, the place where people go, they have a bunch of papers and they're going like, you know that room, that place, the place where Bain... You know, from uh, from from Batman, he goes in and, and beats people up. You know, that place. That place is the market itself. They are the place where everything is traded. Now, they have very, very specific rules in which they can shut down a stock. And like he said, like he said, yeah, it's where somebody goes, bruh, bruh. Um, but yeah, that place uh, can, those guys can make the call to shut down a stock if they think there's massive fraud happening that could hurt a lot of people. Other than that, it's fair game. That's the whole point. You're supposed to be able to make money on shit and only supposed to shut it down if there's fraud. But Robin Hood chose to shut it down anyway, using the technicality that they're a broker. Oh, Gaylord, that's very complicated. We can't get into that. Some other time, maybe because you don't control the venue. You didn't know about any information that GameStop or any of these other stocks needed to put out. You don't have any reason to believe there's fraud that you've articulated. And you're certainly not protecting these people who've been living the dream of making money, especially at the expense of the big guys. So why should people believe you did this for the right reasons? Well, we, we have no choice. We have to comply with all financial uh, requirements you literally do and that financial requirement does not exist this is a flat lie right now and look chris realizes it this is an obvious lie the sec Regulation. hasn't said you had to do this i'll check this in just a well, second well lots of brokers uh have to uh comply with these financial requirements and restrict and have issued restrictions on some of these names uh and 
this is a industry-wide thing. You yourself me Good mentioned luck, actual that username. other brokers this week have imposed restrictions. And not speaking for other firms, but for Robinhood in particular, this isn't because there's uh, you know deals happening with market makers we route to or market participants. But These then why are... did you allow people to keep selling but not buying? The re Damn, really weird that you do that, right? That's what you, that's the exact action you would take if you wanted the hedge funds who need to buy stocks desperately as soon as possible to save money if you wanted them to win. Hmm. Weird. Weird that that is the literal only action that you would take. Cuomo from the top rope. I know, the lib. Who, who would have thought in the last minute? The reason that is so troubling to people is that they were making money buying the stock because they were against the short side. Yes! And so by enabling them to sell but not buy, it sounds like you were allowing the hedge funds, and again, one of them owns a piece of you, and Hell they yeah, had a big forged. short position, and that looks like a stinky conflict that you didn't come uh -oh, out- Uh-oh, stinky conflict! Uh-oh, stinky conflict! Straight on from the start. Address that. Well, not, none of that had anything to do with our decision to do this. <laughs> yes, it literally did. Are you kidding me, dude? Address it. Okay, I won't address it. Again, this is just looking at regulatory requirements, financial requirements, um, and we 100% will always protect our customers. We're the entire business is operating to empower individual investors and has been since its founding. And that's what Lying. Robinhood is committed to continue to do. So we want, we don't want to restrict buying in these 13 stocks. Um, we're doing the best we can to re-enable it as long as it's operationally and, uh, and, and prudent from a deposit standpoint. Yep. So there we have it. There you have the embarrassing interview in which he actually gets foot pushback. And let me tell you again, uh, CNBC, oh, he didn't answer. Of course he didn't answer. This is a desperate attempt to save, to like, to save as much face as possible. This is emergency PR bullshit. It is literally an ink cloud. Yeah, I don't think that's true though. They said they don't have a liquidity problem, which means they shouldn't be out of money. They specifically said multiple times it wasn't a liquidity problem, which would, it would be a liquidity problem is when you don't have the cash on hand to process the trades. But they said it wasn't that. So what's the only reason? Well, the only reason would be that they don't want their dudes to lose. They don't want their big boys to lose. They want you to lose. They want Redditors to lose. They want their average fucking millennial who gambled their money on a well, admittedly well-informed move. Of course they would say that. To say, of course, yes, yes. I know they're saying that in front of them, but he's contradicting himself. Even his statement is bullshit. Even his statement is bullshit. It's so transparent. It's actually unbelievable. And remember, this has only emboldened the, the current uh, push. Let's take a look at GameStop right now. What is GameStop at? Let's look at GME right now. Oh my God. Look at this here. GME is at 325. Still. Yeah, they're closed now. Yes. Stocks are closed, but it closed at 325. Can I check AMC? Yeah. $13. Hey, that's quite a bit up. Uh-oh. Oh, shit. It looks like they might be in trouble. It looks like there might be another one. How are people holding the line? Because it's so obvious. It's so obvious. Ghost Boy... This is not the place to ask for financial advice. If you want to get in on this, go do a lot. Listen, do a lot of due diligence on Wall Street bets and elsewhere, okay? Don't ask me for it. All I'm doing is providing coverage. You can go dig deeper if you want to make I literally cannot. Because the fact of the matter is, yeah, don't spend what you can't lose ever. That's always a rule, okay? Unless you have no other choice, okay? And, and admittedly, a lot of people do.
the sad part about this is that r slash wsb and simps so close to class consciousness are still saying they want clean and fair market after this dot smh but give them time okay listen give them time right now everybody's panicking i don't expect people to make ideological you know, putting one and two together in the heat of the moment. Give them a little bit to think about it and figure out what actually happened. This is so bald faced that I don't know. I actually am starting to think this might actually be pretty good. It's so big. 350,000 people were watching AOC last night on Twitch alone. Like even the mainstream news sources can't cover it up. This is so fucked. Now, do I think it's some kind of like proletarian re revolution? No, but could it be a really big deal? Could it be something that makes people think and remember what actually happened? Could this, with Occupy Wall Street in the past, with the last crash, could this be enough for people to go, no, this shit is bullshit? We'll see. Well, CNBC, yeah. It was actually pretty good. It, uh, it was actually pretty good. Well, we're going to talk about Boogie 298 later. <laughs> some mainstream news sources seem like they aren't trying to cover it up even, which is neat to see. Well, because some of them realize that it would be suicide to do so. Like, uh, you do realize that, like, like some types of lies are just not, uh, they're just not sellable. You, They're too obvious, and you can't even sell them. Anyway, it's really wild. It really, really is wild. WSB is calling this Occupy 2.0, and honestly, it's hitting them where it hurts this time. Well, yeah, it is. See, Occupy Wall Street was a big PR thing, but there was no money in Occupy Wall Street, unfortunately. But now, they're occupying the stocks. How was made my day off? I hope you got to chill out to the maximum. Actually, I didn't. I did a lot of work on my day off, believe it or not, so it wasn't really a day off. I did a lot of prep for this, a lot of prep for this, but that's okay. That's the life of being a broadcaster. It's all right. I'll get to rest in the future. And we're going to have a lot of fun on my gaming stream this uh, this weekend. Okay? So, it looks like the squeeze has not been squoze. Yes. So, this is a, it looks like this is a website that's letting you know what's going on. Yeah, I am working hard for you. You know I'm working hard for you. I told you. I made you all a promise. When you support me, I'm going to bring you fucking God-tier content. That's the promise. That's the demon mama promise to the best of my ability. I'm not a god. I'm a demon, and I have my limitations, but I will always do my best to bring you fucking god-tier coverage to the best of my ability. Yeah? The demon mama guarantee, it's true! It's true! Anyway, thank you. I appreciate you all, too. Even Marx was a stonks, bro. Yes, he was. Because you can't not... You can't not, okay, it's very difficult to not participate in the system that you live in in some way. You just have to do so intelligently. One of Robin Hood's investors is asked about their customers. Really? Hmm. Let's take a look at this. This is from CNBC. All right, let's take a look at this little thing. Let's do it. I'm sure. Jason, it's Deirdre. Um, you mentioned the interviews hey, that Vlad did um, last yeah. night, and he said in a number of them that Robinhood has restricted trading to protect their customer. Who is Robinhood's customer? Yeah, I mean, I think ultimately uh -oh. it's those retail investors. If they lose those retail investors, there Hold is on. no business. The retail investors, Jason, a customer is someone who pays Robinhood. As you've mentioned a few times, uh -oh. a retail investor does not pay Robinhood. Those are commission-free yeah, trades. I, I, the customer is actually Wall Street, isn't it? It's the money, it's the market makers who pay uh, for order flow. So oh, how yeah, can the business I, I, model be let traders trade for free? It's actually making money off of order flow, is it not? Well, of course, and they're this very- This is the magic bullshit I was talking about. This is the paperwork magic that I was talking about front about that now and and it's been very clear but some businesses are based on having large audiences that hey, trickle are they, 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 like you said yeah i think they, they never they, talk about that they talk about democratizing trading eric nelson i will be doing binding of isaac once the new expansion drops because oh my god that's going to be pog and i'm going to show you my true skill i have almost a thousand hours in binding of in the in the second binding of isaac and uncounted more in the first binding of isaac so once the binding of isaac expansion drops we will be playing it absolutely anyway back to this
And they talk Listen, about it's... commission free trades all the time. We ah. rarely hear them talk about order flow. I think people understand it. I think it's in all the terms of service and, and they've been very clear about it. So, you know, it's, it's very similar to the Facebook situation where you get a free product. If those consumers don't use Facebook, the free product or Instagram or Twitter, the free product uh, or CNBC, the free uh -huh. product, uh, you know, you don't have the ability then to make the money off of that audience, if you will. And so, okay, this, this, it, <laughs> Jason, I, I know, you just brought easy up Facebook. to say that. It, yeah, sure. Go ahead. So, so a lot, there's been a lot of trust lost in Facebook over the last few Absolutely. years. Yeah. So why should traders trust Robinhood if they now know that they're turning around and selling their trades to market makers and perhaps not executing they, they... at the best price? Yes. Now that right there, right there, what she just said. Now, this guy right here and, his, and the company he's talking about, Robinhood, has a legal obligation to execute as effectively as possible for their customers that is the law this is one of the few laws that ha that we have that protect small investors that if you're going to a broker that broker has a legal obligation to not fuck you over so for example a broker can be be criminally charged if they're negligent with your stock because you're Tr you are trusting them with your money and this is where robin hood might actually be in trouble this is where robin hood might actually be in a little bit of trouble demon mama sounds like she doesn't know shit about investing all speculative crap and nonsense donald trump the god i have a feeling that you know even less than i do Okay, so number one, they've been clear about with the market makers that that's how they make money. Everybody understands that. The second piece is, um, should they trust them after having turned off trading yesterday? I think they have to rebuild that trust. So I think that these companies- Sure, you wanna come on and talk about it, Donald Trump the God? You can wait in line after the other person. When they go through crises like these, and every big company, whether it's Tesla, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Uber or Airbnb when somebody trashes an apartment, these new platforms that get to scale, there's always going to be these crisis moments. And the it's way you can- the double think. Democratizing the free market isn't possible, but lamb blasts the actual economic democracy, libertarian socialism. True, Adam Flores, thank you. judge the founder is do they communicate well uh, and i think vlad's doing a better job of that and i think he did a good job last night on I cnbc just, you, and i know just, he'll do a better job okay. tomorrow and then how do you what you ask me the question let me give the answer please and the answer is they need to earn that trust every day by having a stable great product that delights users and whether it was uber which took a lot of hits or facebook and Instagram, a stable platform that delights users is he trying to say that the, the that that the draw to robin hood is it's pretty ui Come on. Come on, dude. Instagram. This is yes, pathetic. all these platforms have taken hits. They have made mistakes. What I look at as an investor in them is how do they respond to them? Do they learn from them? And do they get stronger? Jason, what I'm hearing you say, basically, I mean, I'm, I'm less concerned about Robinhood and more concerned about the broader market. Yeah. Is that this is a that's the big classic issue. cyclical. Uh, this is a classic cyclical flow of retail into the market and that it will uh, ebb out as it always does. I don't hear you talking about major structural change or some sort of end of centralized finance, as we know some people have tried to argue on our air. Yeah, that's a little silly. I think that's those the crypto folks going down the crypto rabbit hole and they think like nobody's going to be in charge of anything and the entire world's going to be on some immutable blockchain that's not controlled by anybody. That's super interesting and uh, a great intellectual argument. It's not very realistic. Sometimes you do need to have central yeah, controls and, and Bitcoin is a fantastic technology. It does not apply to everything. Uh, so they, they're a little drunk on the distributed finance and all that stuff. I know it's real, but you can't apply it to everything. What is he even? Everything. And is what, the stock we, thing? what we saw is. here was these shorts. I mean, I think that's the bigger issue. It's easy to gang up on Robinhood or whoever the lead company is, all due respect, Deirdre. But and they and they do have a responsibility as the lead company to be the best performing company. And I guarantee you they will be the best performing company. Yo, there's a pathologic key in chat right now. Pathologic 2 is my favorite game of all time. You better grab that key. Go, go, go. I've seen this movie before. Thank you, Haley. Um, putting that aside, the big issue here is 
you know, who is shorting this stock? How can you short 130% of a company? I still don't have a great answer for that. That makes no percent, no sense. And then if have these shorts all covered their position? And then if the if people are buying the stock now at 20 billion or 30 billion or whatever they wind up buying it at, is there any chance that the company can live up to that? Is that and has the company's fate changed? Have they done a secondary? Have they put a billion dollars uh, of this, you know, incredible acceleration in their Happy enterprise birthday. value into their coffers? And, and is there some vision here for how GameStop becomes a twenty billion dollar company? I could see betting on it becoming a five billion dollar company, <laughs> right. but this guy twenty is that's an what... investor. What's my humble bundle code thingy? Oh yeah, I can get you that. Hold on, give me a second, Samoski. I'll get you that in a second. I'm getting concerned there. about. I'm concerned yeah. about that too, Jason. And um, yeah. something that I've raised yeah. this week is part of the. All right. So we've seen what we need to see out of this. That was more pathetic bullshit. As you can see, there is no. They don't actually even have an argument. All they have is buying time. Just buying time. Holy shit. Yeah, go for it, Haley. Go ahead. Post yours. If it use use Haley's code because Haley gives lots of cool codes here. So use Haley's code. Okay. Go ahead, Haley. You, you can take it. Yeah, go for it. Um, so, yeah. All right, but don't get used to it because I can't have people posting codes in chat all the time, okay? Please. So, again, I want to just to end this segment, I want to end off this particular segment real quick with going back to what I read earlier, Okay so that everybody can be on the same page because we got a lot more people in here now and I want you all to see what we were talking about. Okay, yeah, I'll let you know to get a Nick on and we'll have a debate with Nick or whatever. Okay, here we go. Ready? We're gonna read it again, okay? Here we go. This is for you, Dad. I remember when the housing collapse sent a torpedo through my family. My father's concrete company collapsed almost overnight. My father lost his home. My uncle lost his home. I remember my brother helping my father count pocket change on our kitchen table. This was all the money he had left in the world. While this was happening in my home, I saw hedge funders literally drinking champagne as they looked down on the Occupy Wall Street protesters. I will never forget that. My father never recovered from that blow. He fell deeper and deeper into alcoholism and exists now as a shell of his former self waiting for death. This is all the money I have and I'd rather lose it all than give it up than give them what they need to destroy me. Taking money from me won't hurt me because I don't value it. I'll burn it all down just to spite them. This is for you, dad. And again, could be a totally false story, could be totally made up, but it's resonating with a lot of people. A lot of people a lot of people right now and those people are acting with their dollar even in the face of the entire system lining up against them and they're winning sympathy they're winning the sympathy of even the market libs the cuomos the the workers at msnbc and cnbc that's kind of wild there are many, many stories like it and worse, believe it or not. So we don't know. Maybe this story is 100% true. Maybe it's not, but it resonates with a lot of people. So we're going to have to see. We're going to have to keep following this because I didn't, you know, on Wednesday when I saw this thing happening, I thought we were going to get like a, a one-week story out, th out of this. But we might actually get more than a one week story out of this this is spinning out of control and the fact that they're so bald facedly lying that they were willing to gamble to such an incredible degree we might actually see something come from this who knows